From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Top of the world! Top of the world! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This from the website sleep.com. And uh, you'll never read this article, so I'm going to read it to you. That's my job. I read this stuff. I do all the heavy lifting. And then I come in here and kind of boil it down so you can understand it. You know, you're just too busy to do any of the hard, the hard work here. So, so I have to do it. So this is from Slate.com. The war on fact has just crossed a major red line. The Los Angeles City Council has passed an ordinance prohibiting construction of new fast food restaurants in a 32-square-mile area inhabited by 500,000 low-income people. We're not talking anymore about preaching diet and exercise, just closing calorie counts or restricting sodas in school. We are talking about banning the sale of food to adults. That's right. Trading French fries like cigarettes or liquor. In this uh, op-ed piece in Slate, the uh, author, whose name is William Salatan, says, I didn't think that would happen in the United States anytime soon. I was wrong. The mayor hasn't yet signed the ordinance, but he probably will since it passed unanimously. It doesn't affect existing restaurants, and initially it will impose only a one-year moratorium. But that period is likely to be extended to two years or more, and the prohibition sponsor hopes to make it permanent. What we're looking at, essentially, is the beginning of food zoning. Liquor and cigarette sales are already zoned. You can't sell booze here. You can't sell smokes there. Each city makes its own rules block by block. Proponents of the L.A. ordinance see it as the logical next step. Fast food is bad for you, just as drinking or smoking is, they argue. Community Coalition, a local activist group, promotes the moratorium as a sequel to its crackdown on alcohol merchants, scummy motels, and other so-called nuisance businesses. An L.A. councilman says the ordinance makes sense because it's, quote, not too different to how we regulate liquor stores. Boy. A few other cities and towns have zoned restaurants for economic, environmental, or aesthetic reasons, but L.A. appears to be the first to do it for health reasons. Last year, a public interest law group at Johns Hopkins University outlined the rationale. They said, given the significance of the obesity epidemic in the United States and the scientific evidence and legal basis supporting the zoning of fast food outlets... Municipalities have an effective yet untried tool to address obesity in their communities. The colonist goes on to say, I assume this idea would go nowhere because we Americans don't like government restrictions on what we can eat. You can nag us, you can regulate what our kids eat in school, but you'll get our burgers when you pry them from our cold, dead hands. How did the L.A. City Council get around this resistance? 
by spinning the moratorium as a way to create more food choices, not fewer, and by depicting poor people like children as less capable of free choice. Oh, boy. Start with the press release issued a week ago by the moratorium sponsor, Councilwoman Jan Perry. Its subhead says the ordinance will, quote, help spur the development of diverse food choices. In the second paragraph, Perry declares, This ordinance is in no way attempting to tell people what to eat, but rather responding to the need to attract sit-down restaurants, full-service grocery stores, and healthy food alternatives. Ultimately, this ordinance is about providing choices, something that is currently lacking in our community. So is grammar, apparently. Those choices, they is lacking. How does blocking new fast food outlets provide more choices? It helps local officials, quote, attract grocery stores and restaurants to the area by preserving existing land for these uses, says the release. And why does the moratorium apply only to the poor part of town around south central L.A.? A fellow council member explains, the over-concentration of fast food restaurants in conjunction with the lack of grocery stores places these communities in a poor situation to locate a variety of food and fresh food. Supporters of the moratorium call the state of affairs food apartheid. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's an odd slogan. As the Encyclopedia Africana notes, apartheid was a racially discriminatory policy, quote, enforced by white minority governments. Opening a McDonald's in South Central L.A. is not government-enforced racial discrimination. But telling McDonald's it can open franchises only in the white part of town? What do you call that? And what about the argument that people in South Central need the government to block unhealthy food options because they're, quote, in a poor situation to locate better choices? This is the argument normally made for restricting children's food options at school, that they're more dependent and vulnerable than the rest of us. How do you feel about treating poor people like children? It's true that food options in low-income neighborhoods are, on average, worse than the options in wealthier neighborhoods. But restricting options in low-income neighborhoods is a disturbingly paternalistic way of solving the problem. And the help that this attributed to poor people is exaggerated. Uh, it says here, here's a quote now, You try to get a salad within 20 minutes of our location, it's virtually impossible! says the Community Coalition's executive director. Really? The Coalition's headquarters is at 8101 South Vermont Avenue. <laughs> a quick Google search shows, among other outlets, a jack-in-the-box six blocks away. They have salads. Not the world's greatest salad, but not as bad as a government that tells you whose salad you can eat. Already, the majority leader of New York City Council wants to adopt foods only, and several cities have phoned L.A.'s planning department to request copies of the ordinance. Hey, I'm all for better food in impoverished neighborhoods, and centers for grocery stores are a great idea, but telling certain kinds of restaurants that they can't serve certain kinds of people is just plain wrong, even when you think it's for their own good. Remember years ago they sued Denny's? Because they said that at Denny's, African Americans were not being served or they were being made to pay in advance for a meal. I mean, under this mentality, and I'm being very careful how I phrase this so you don't misunderstand, under the mentality of this new law, one could say that Denny's was looking out for the health of the community. Right? Now, let's say I own a business and I see an obese black woman walk up and order a couple of cheeseburgers. If I say, you know what, I'm looking out for your best interest and I'm not going to sell them to you. Could I be sued for discrimination? I'm not trying to discriminate. I'm trying to help. 
I remember when I was a kid, my father owned, and if you lived in the Northeast, you've seen these. My father owned a Mr. Softy truck. Mr. Softy was like Dairy Queen or that other thing called Carvel from the Northeast. It was soft ice cream. And it was a truck that came around and served chocolate and vanilla soft ice cream and sundaes made with soft ice cream and uh, other things made with soft ice cream, milkshakes, what have you. And and we used to go out every weekend up and down the streets of Plainview, Long Island with the bell clanging and the generator going continuously for 12 hours and the smell of gasoline permeating the back of the truck driving around looking for people who needed ice cream on a hot summer day. And I remember there used to be a guy who came out, and I swear this is true, he lived right next to a schoolyard in Plainview, Long Island. This guy had to be 350, 400 pounds. He was mammoth, and he came out in like a wife-beater t-shirt. And there was no wife-beater t-shirt that could hold this guy. There was always a little bit of belly hanging out and... Uh, he was uh, one of these guys who was like prematurely aging. He was probably about 30 years old, balding, had a big mustache and his gut hanging out. And he would always come out and he would order like the largest, several items in the largest possible sizes. And I'm not convinced this guy had kids. I think he was just going out there and ordering lunch. And we would serve him this huge boatload of soft ice cream treats like banana boats and hot fudge sundaes and all this stuff. Now, I would look at this guy and I would say, I, act, I, I was 12 years old, you know, I actually felt guilty. Like, I'm killing this guy. One day he's just going to keel over. But you know what? That was none of my business. If he wants to go out there and keel over, that, that's not my problem. He's an adult. He will make his own choices. What will that be like if we start looking people, uh, you know, and saying, you know what? You know what, pal? You're too fat to have a steak here. How about a salad? I mean, you can't. Now, a precedent has been set. I mean, if you see any fat black people in Los Angeles, don't serve them any fattening food because you're just trying to help them. Right? And when Denny's was discriminating against African Americans, they could, now they could just argue, well, we were just protecting their health. They didn't need any Grand Slam breakfast in the black community. Oh, no. So we were making sure they weren't getting any. I mean, does any of this make sense to you? Tom Likes. Likes. 1 800 5 800 You know what? You are the best thing that has happened to women, and they should just. Listen to you. The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. Coming to you from an undisclosed location where we can still get the ultimate cheeseburger. We can even get the penultimate cheeseburger. Lean, what would you rather eat, the ultimate cheeseburger or the penultimate cheeseburger? Lean says he'd rather eat the ultimate cheeseburger. Or would you rather eat the double cheeseburger from AMPM? 99 cents for McDonald's, of course. Good answer. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Is anyone selling the penultimate cheeseburger? <laughs> you know, just to show how ignorant people are, I w I w if I owned a fast food place, I would definitely sell something called the penultimate cheeseburger. I'd say they have the ultimate cheeseburger, and now we have the penultimate cheeseburger. And they'd be flying out the door. Be flying out the goddamn door. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, if the ultimate cheeseburger is that good, imagine how the penultimate cheeseburger is. <laughs> now watch, 40 morons are going to write it. Tom, don't you know what penultimate means? I do, you idiot. Don't bother proving my point. 
one 800 tom that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Stu. Speaking of meals, do they serve Stu now in South Central LA? Stu, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I'm doing well. How are you, Tom? I'm great. So I called in to see if you were overreaching with your Denny's analogy. Why is that? Well, you likened it to uh, people turning uh, clients away because of their... Perhaps they're they're ethical. They're rather well. Maybe around. Denny's was just looking out for their health. Well, that's not what the ordinance says, is it? Well, the ordinance. Well, the ordinance kind of does say the same thing. It's saying uh, that uh, that uh, minorities are too stupid or lazy to find healthy food in their neighborhood. Uh, so we're going to help them by making it illegal. Right. Which and that's what that's exactly what Denny's appeared to be doing. That well, Denny said, hey, you know what? You guys have had enough unhealthy food. We're not going to serve you. See, I thought the ordinance said that we're just not going to build any more fat, fat food joints for a year. No, that's what it says, but the, come on. You know what this is all about. I know what this is all about. The article in Slate that I read knows what this is all about. Yeah, but I think it's reaching because they're not getting rid of the existing fast food joints like the Jack in the Box that's a less than a mile away from. Which this, is another uh, thing. I mean, if this is such a health crisis, why not just take out a bulldozer and start going after all of them? Well, there you go. Perhaps you should uh, you should bring it up. While we're at it, just start bulldozing those Korean liquor stores too. Let's go. Then, then we can't get booze in Hollywood. What are you going? Where are you going? No, go no, no, no. You can still get it in Hollywood. You just can't get it in South Central LA. Well, I, yeah, I just thought it was a little overreaching, because I don't think Denny's actually is the same uh, scenario as what they're proposing, but in any event... I By the way, don't you like the way they grandfathered Marie Callender's into this? There, Now, there's a health food location. <laughs> well, I wonder you, what the basis is. All you black folks, you cannot eat the ultimate cheeseburger. You know, but a chocolate cream pie, that's <laughs> one of the five basic food groups. So what's their definition of fast food, then? Turkey pot pie, everybody. Did they define their fast food? What a fast food I, I didn't. I didn't read the exact ordinance. I only know what the newspapers have said about it. Uh huh. But you know what? This is a free goddamn country, and it's one thing to say you can't sell heroin on the street, and it's another thing to say you can't sell a cheeseburger or a fillet o fish sandwich. Certainly, but I don't. You know, it's it's a tenuous analogy to say that uh, they're turning people away. Based on the color of their skin. Well, but isn't that the next logical step? I guess it is. What if I see this story in the paper and I'm a, uh, I work in LA and it's like, really? African Americans aren't eating well. I need to do something to pitch in. And so the next time an African American walks into my place of business, I say, are you kidding me? A steak? Forget it. I see what you're saying. I'm going to sell you salad because I'm doing it for your own good. Yeah, it's a slippery slope the way they... Uh... This is where we're going. Yeah. yeah. What used to be called discrimination, now it's like, well, looking out for people. It's amazing that they just left it at South Central. Why didn't they just do the whole thing so they wouldn't... Because uh... if white people are fat, that's okay. <laughs> you know, and then obviously I'm concerned about fat Mexicans. Or is that next? It's unclear. No more lard in Boyle Heights. We're making a law. This is a Manteca free zone, dude. What would they do in the Hollywood Hills? They wouldn't eat. They don't eat anyway. Well, that's true. You know, my neighbor is Paris Hilton, for Christ's sake. <laughs> anyway, I right, Stu. Thank you. Stu's just. It's like that play Six Characters in Search of an Author. Stu is just going to cast about until he thinks the next thing to say. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Moses on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Pops. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Pops. Although, uh, I'm right here in South Central Los Angeles, and uh, it's a damn shame I won't be able to get a cheeseburger around here. Well, you know what? The city has decided that you are too lazy or stupid to take care of yourself, so they're going to do it for you. <laughs> Right, right. That's a slap in the face. What's next? Cigarettes, beer. Uh, you know. It's oh, it's coming. Are you kidding me? They've gone after liquor stores already. 
No doubt, no doubt. I think it's a slap in the face of the whole community because it's exactly they're saying that we are too stupid to think for ourselves. I mean, same menu they got the cheeseburger, they got a salad. And that might not be the best taste of salad, but they got it. You know? By the way, last time I was at uh, Ralph's, they had vodka. Yeah. They also yeah. had fried chicken. Exactly. Exactly. Everybody got it. But, I mean, it's up to the people to make their own choices. But I guess, like you said, they're too stupid and too dumb to do it. So the uh, government got to step in. Uh, to me, and, and by the way, it was an African-American city councilwoman who came up with this. This is insulting to me. If, you, if you're black, it's insulting. And not only if you're black, but if you live in the hood, period. Right. I mean, it's a lot of, of, of Rasa stay out here, and it's a damn shame. You know, I take it myself as a slap in the face. They're telling me I'm too stupid to order the right amount of food or order the right portion or order the right salad, whatever. By the way, hate to hate to be like a conspiracy theorist, but who's to say that the existing restaurants didn't lobby for this law to get passed so they would have a monopoly on That's South true. Central L.A.? That's true. And they talk about not opening any fast food restaurant. Well, why, instead of doing that and limiting us to whatever they want, why don't they just give the sit-down restaurants a tax break or something? Uh, around that area to invite them over. Yeah. Instead of saying, you can't have this. Yeah. You know what we need? More Olive Gardens. <laughs> people are already, people are already eating healthy. <laughs> we need more <laughs> red lobsters in the African-American community because there's not enough drawn butter. <laughs> I hear you, Pops. Anyway, Pops, that's all I had to say. And uh, Can I take myself out hood style? You, style? you absolutely can, Moses. Let me know, let me know. Do it. Bitch, shut the hell up. Can't you see I'm listening to the Pops? Gotta have my Pops. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Long time listener. Uh this would be my first time talking to you. Thank you. I, I gotta chime in on a couple things here, Tom. Um, I definitely, I was diagnosed with high cholesterol, you know, a little while ago. I'm about 39. Um, I really tried to stay away from those types of places, and I don't think this is a totally bad idea. Um, Why not? Well, what I think is that the inner city is, is predominantly Hispanic and blacks, and they do like their, uh, uh, their very fattening foods. And, um, I just and how is this going to stop people from eating fattening food? I don't think it's going to stop them from going to another place to find their fattening foods. But I think the real issue is that uh, California is going to have to foot the bill. And when you have these uh, large amounts of... Uh, There's fat you know, people. By the sound... way, I've lived in L.A. for 20 years. There's fat people all over town. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I do believe that. Uh, but I'm just saying, when you have these large amounts of people in Los Angeles on welfare... We are going to have... Why do you assume everybody in South Central Los Angeles is on welfare? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, we're going to have to pay for this medical when they get older with coronary heart disease. I mean, you know... And, 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 how, do, and how do you think this is going to stop people from eating unhealthy food? It is definitely not going to stop. And I so if it isn't going to stop them, why make a law like this? And I, I got to say, I got to be honest with you and agree with you that opening a, uh, would you say, some kind of restaurant, uh, eat, sit down... That's not going to stop anything either. But uh, some of these places, they and, and i got to say, I talked to your, your buddy, too. Uh, the My buddy? Is, the which advertisement which is buddy did you talk to? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, Tom. But uh, I talked to him about advertising. Who? This city is Who did you talk to? Uh, I believe it was Dean. Dean, come in here. Yep. Dean? Step in. When are these people going to learn? When are they going to learn? God damn it. What's Dean waiting for? Kitty. <laughs> Step in here, Dean. I was talking to the uh, put the caller on hold. This is important. Okay. Jesus. Now, John and Torrance says that he and you had a conversation. Uh, what did you talk about with John? Oh, Jesus. Uh, John, John what, is, what is it you talked to my friend about? No, I apologize, Tom, because I know you... What did you talk to him about? I wanted to talk about advertising. Advertising? What did he say oh, about advertising? Right. He was saying that all the bad stuff is located in the inner city. So you'll see advertising for, like, liquor and stuff like that. All the bad stuff is located that's in one That's where the one, customers are. One did area. you tell him that? 
John didn't. Uh, t- I thought it would. Be what do you got to do? Put a billboard for cool cigarettes in Beverly Hills. You got to put the billboard where the customers live. Apparently, John thought that. We all that. know where the customers live. Now, let's not pretend. We know. The cigarette company knows. The public knows. You know. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Did you tell him that? I'll tell him when I get back in the Well, you might studio. as well, because he's not getting back on the air. Okay, that, is that all he had to say? That's he all he had else? to say. No, okay. we'll, we'll let him run out of What do we need him for? I agree. Just you come in and tell us yourself. Thank you, sir. All right. There goes Dean. Huh. Another caller who decided to talk about the conversation he had with Dean. What do we need the caller for? Just bring Dean right in. For Christ's sake. By the way, new policy on the program effective today. Because I, you know what? I, I woke up with a start about 5 a.m. I do want to say this before I go to the break here. We have a new policy and it starts effective immediately. Because clearly there's no other way to keep you people from throwing your food across the room. So now we're going to whip you into shape. You know how we're going to do it? You watch. You watch how this problem begins to abate now. One curse word and I'm hanging up on you. There will be no explanations. Nothing. One curse word, and you know what the curse words are. I don't have to let you watch. I don't have to lecture you. One curse word, and I am taking you off the air. Done. The minute we hit the dump button, you are gone, and we will. that's it. So if you decide to call in here and, oh, sorry, sorry. I love the people that go, yeah, yeah, you know, I was really effing mad. Oh, sorry, sorry. You people know exactly what you're doing. And so now, here's how I'm going to stop you from doing it. Curse once, accidentally, and I'm doing the air quotes here, accidentally. You accidentally curse once, and you're gone. I am now going to have a zero-tolerance policy. Now, we bleep you anyway when you curse, but from now on, I am going to, I'm just going to take you off the air, not to return. And by the way, Dean, no second chances. If they call back and say, Tom, cut me off. I didn't finish my Gone. You're out. Done. And you watch this problem go away. You, all of a sudden, people are going to know what the curse words are when I start hanging up on everybody who curses. I don't care if I have to do it 20 calls in a row. I'm going to, I'm hanging up on everybody. Every, the minute you say the F word, the S word, the C word, the P word, you're not talking about a kitty cat. If you're not a rooster saying cock a doodle do, I'm hanging up on you. Your time is up. Immediately. There will be no second chances anymore. Period. I just had to say that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> there he is, cock a doodle do. I mean, look, when you call in, it's okay. You can call in and you can say ass. Ass is okay. And if you call a radio program, you can also say whole. You can say whole. Whole is perfectly okay. You just can't put them together. And if you do, I'm going to hang up on you. Now, if I, now, uh, another example. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. (laughs) Now, seriously. Now, for example, if you want to call in and you want to call someone a jerk off, you can. But don't you dare. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Hollywood. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the ordinance in South Central Los Angeles. You can't build any more fast food places. That'll protect the black folks. Man. Derek on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Derek. I just want to say something real quick. I'm a 53-year-old African-American. I live in Pasadena, but I used to live in, in metropolitan Los Angeles. And I'll tell you something, uh, something people are not thinking about. If they're so blasted concerned about 
um, people's health. Why is it they're removing everything that's health related to address the health issues? They shut the hospital down, you know, King Drew down. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, at King Drew, people were dropping dead in the emergency room. Exactly. And, and, you know, they shut all the clinics down. People need that for their health care. They don't have any programs to address their prescription drugs that they need and everything else that they need to maintain their health. So why all of a sudden they're concerned about the health of, of the people down there? On top of that, you just increased the value of every McDonald's, Burger King, Jack in the Box, Wendy's, KFC, Popeye's, and everything else. You now, the value of the existing places is now higher. You know what's going on, Tom. Man, take me out, Kobe style. Here you go, Derek. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's James on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, J. Hey, Tom. You know, I, nine times out of ten, I agree with you, man. But I got to call you out on this one. There is enough legislation in this country, in this state, uh, making it okay to be fat. You know, you're 200 pounds overweight. Oh, here's a handicap placard, so you don't have to walk an extra hundred feet. Like it's about time. They, I mean, they regulate everything else that's bad for you. Why can't they regulate this? Well, they really don't, uh, because, uh, for example, uh, cigarettes, while regulated, are generally available. You can buy them. You can sell them. I mean, they're there. But there are laws against you. can't sell legally sell cigarettes. How far are we from saying no cigarettes in South Central L.A.? How far are we from saying no malt liquor in South Central Los Angeles? Well, they're not saying you can't have bad food. They're saying you can't have any more. Nah, but I mean, that's the first step. That's there. the first step down the slippery slope. Now, once you've done this, then we move on to other things. But there are, I mean, I, I, didn't, I was down there just recently, and there is a KFC or a McDonald's or something. Uh, there's five of them on every single block. That's and because you, there are customers for five of them on every single block. Well, just, uh, there, but there are customers for cigarettes and alcohol down there. And, and, and this law like is not going to change that at all. Well, I, I mean, I think ultimately that, you know, with I, I was just I was just at an In-N-Out burger, and uh, I love it. You know, unfortunately, I was blessed with good genes, and I and I am not obese. I'm not going to be obese. But, I, I mean, I see these, you know, eight-, nine-year-old kids that are not just husky. Remember that was when that was the term? The kid was husky. They are fat. Right. I mean, just fat. But there's and only here, one part here. of the city where people need to be protected. Well, not just the one part of the There's city. no fat people outside of South Central Los Angeles. If, there was, if it was an issue in Sherman Oaks, I guarantee you somebody would have done something about it. But it, it people are fat time. all over the country. Look around. So maybe well, then, like, this is the first step, and maybe this is the first step to doing it all around the country. What? Would be no, no, no. This is, not the, this is a free enterprise system. The, the, the idea is not to start telling people what they can and can't eat. The idea is you educate people on what's good and bad and then let them make their own choices. That's what liberty means. That's what freedom is all about, you idiot. Now, you, I, come on. I totally agree with you, Tom. Then I if totally you agree with it, if somebody, if somebody on Slauson Avenue in the afternoon wants to have some extra crispy KFC, who are we to say they can't have it? They can. It's probably across the street from so, them. So who are we to say? Who are we to say? Oh, it, we have to make it a little more inconvenient for people. Who are we to say that? I think that we are the the majority. Who, and by uh, making it more inconvenient, what are we saying? That the people who live in South Central are just a little too lazy to go out of their way and get fried chicken. So therefore, maybe they'll start eating something healthy. Well, I, do you agree that if, if we made healthy food more accessible and cheaper... Cause this is not going to make healthy food more accessible. Well, I mean, ultimately, McDonald's, people go to McDonald's, people go to Burger King because it's cheap. You can feed your family. And, it, and McDonald's is going to stay right where it is. You know, there is nothing stopping health food restaurants from opening up a South Central today. There's nothing. Good. The reason they don't open there is because there are no customers for it. Well, they don't have a choice at this point. What do you I mean, mean they don't have a choice? You, you're telling me, are you telling me there are no vacant storefronts in South Central Los Angeles? Oh, uh, there are tons of them. So I, where, I, I, why don't the health food places move right in? 
Because right now, the, the, the fast food market's got it cornered. I mean, I, I mean but I, we're not closing any fast food stores. I don't, I don't eat a lot of fast Wait, food. Wait, we're not I, closing any fast food stores with this law. We're not closing any? Yeah. No, we're not. We're not closing any. Well, uh, I mean... Well, you're right. They're not closing any. So, so how is this going to make healthy? Happen. How is this going to make healthy food more available to people in South Central Los Angeles? Well, it definitely opens the door for it. Like no, it doesn't. The door's door. open right now, you idiot. There's open storefronts right now. Why hasn't anyone opened health food restaurants in those? I have no idea. Because there's no customers for health food there. Well, it, it, fast food is addicting. I'm not a fast food guy. Don't fast food fast is food. available everywhere. It's available on the Sunset Strip. It's available in Beverly Hills, for Christ's sake. So is, her so is heroin, but that doesn't mean... That's not the point. The point is, how, the, fast food is available everywhere. There's nothing stopping wheatgrass juice manufacturers from opening... There's nothing stopping Jamba Juice from opening 50 franchises in South Central L.A. The only thing stopping them is that they don't believe there's a there's a market for it. Well, fair enough. Don't uh, you think if there was a market for it that somebody would open a Jamba Juice? I'm sure there's a couple Jamba Juices down there. No, then what's it's impossible to find a salad? It's impossible to find any healthy food. Well, That's what they're saying. It's, it's impossible to find. To be fair, the salads at McDonald's, I, like you said, they're not good. But as soon as you put that dressing on them, they're about the Guess what? on the menu. Can I tell you something about South Central Los Angeles? Okay. There's a reason why that's the salads that are sold in South Central Los Angeles. This is a neighborhood of people of lower incomes. That's the kind of salad people with lower incomes can afford. Well. They cannot afford a $14 salad from Patina. Well, if it sells five or six bucks, I can go to a Ralph's and buy five or six dollars worth of produce that would make... You're making my point that. for me! I'm what? You're making my point for me. You could go to Ralph's. You could go to Food for Less. You could go to any number of supermarkets in South Central L.A. You can get a salad. You can get the elements to make a salad. This is just plain stupid. Well, all right, Tom. We, uh... All right, I've had enough. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Susanna, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Um, you kind of started touching on my point is that in lower incomes, and I mean, I'm probably middle class, whatever, but when I don't feel like cooking, um, I want to go have a 99 cent cheeseburger for me and my kids. I can't afford to take them all and have, you know, a $50 meal. So they're going to a lower income place. They're taking out the, the competition. So now the restaurants can leave their prices or not have to reduce their prices to a dollar in an area where people probably need to have 99 cents cheeseburgers because they can't afford any more it to me it's 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 cruel because they're telling these people now no you have to go sit down and eat this this meal these restaurants are acceptable but you can't get your 99 cent cheeseburgers uh well it's not right to me i mean besides what you said is telling people what they can and can't eat that's up to them but and what about gas stations like how about we talked about this week how about arco stations that sell double cheeseburgers are we going to yeah. say they can't open up in south central also well, exactly. It's just they're putting their, they should not. And what I, I'm curious about, I don't know a lot about laws, obviously, I'm a girl, but can they actually do that? They're going through with this where they can say you cannot put these fast foods in this area? Uh, I guess, uh, I imagine, I would imagine that some of these fast food joints will probably appeal this or file a lawsuit or something. And well, they should. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it just, yeah, I just want to make that point because I, I didn't hear anybody talking about it until you that they're taking the lowest income and taking away their cheapest food when they when the, the woman or men, they don't want to cook dinner. And, and what do and people think? Do people think that the most expensive restaurants in Los Angeles are going to start opening up with South Central? Yeah, we're going to have the South Central Patina. Exactly. We're going to have yeah. South Central AOC. We're going to have South, <laughs> we're going to have South Central Spago. Yes, Wolfgang Puck is going to open a restaurant on Slauson Avenue. Yeah, I'll cop it out, exactly. Now exactly. that they've banned Jack in the Box, here comes Wolfgang. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. And the people that put these laws in our ordinances, it's, they just don't think. And I think We should call Wolfgang decide. Puck and ask him what his plans are for South Central L.A. since they're looking for healthier alternatives. Yeah, exactly. He's going to sell salads for three ninety five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... All right, well, thanks for taking my call, Tom. Well, thank you, Susanna. I appreciate it. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at... 
blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.